input what is language processor so you need one processor which will take your instructions in one language no that should be converted into the instructions which can be understood by the machine right so a translators will get the input source program and then it will convert into object program or target program you have used c in turbo c right or did you use only e lab c lab you have done in e lab only right did you try with turbo c yes ma'am yes. in turbo yes. c also yeah. did ma'am okay so when you write your uh, program when you type your program in an text editor what are what is the next step you did after completing a uh, typing all the complete a uh, complete program what will you do to execute it compile the code yeah compile the code right so you you use uh, if uh, you are using turbo c you are using alt f9 to compile the code right after doing that compilation you may get some errors right in case if you have some errors in your program you will get it you might have read the word lexical error or uh, syntax error like that all these things you will study in this compiler that that are all the jobs of compiler which will go through all the instructions in your program and see if there is any error and based on the phases in which place you get the error it will denote that error if it is occurring in the first phase lexical phase then it will mention that as lexical error if it is occurring in the syntax analyzer second phase means then it will give it as syntax error right once if you read the error and if you try if you read, um, error read all these error statements and if you create uh, if you correct all the statements then you will get one object code did anyone check that file uh, the folder where you have your c programming file once if you complete successful compilation your program folder the folder where you have the program will have one more file with dot u for example if your program is c1.c right or f1.c after compilation successful compilation you might have one more file f1.o did anyone see that file object file okay right. here afterwards you try it uh, if you check the folder you might have one more object program file the with extension .o right and now that object program is ready for execution then you can use after compilation you can go for running right execution right so control f9 you have given so that time you will get it done right you can execute the program and you will get the output okay so the first translator what we have used is assembler that takes assembly program and then it will convert it to object program right so normally when you are doing this process conversion you need some cousins for compilers right as cousins for these translators normally the cousin, cousins of compilers are preprocessor assembler and linker and loader let me tell you what is the use of each and every one sometimes if you are using macros in your program so you have used hash define hash include io.h and all you have used no so what is the use of uh, hash include and all why are you using these statements hash include hash define uh, import libraries import libraries very good some of the header files either it may be a library file or it may be user defined files that should be included with your program for the successful execution of all the instructions in your program for example if you are using scanf right scanf is a function and you don't know what is the functionality or what are the statements you didn't give you didn't uh, uh, redefine scanf in your program but that scanf function is already available in which header file input and output are available in each header file stdio stdio.h file 
So if you go and check the stdio.h file, you can see the function scanf as well as printf functions. There you are having the codes. Uh, when you call scanf, it has to get the input from the keyboard, whatever you are giving. And that it should be assigned to the variables which is given in your format specifier, right? You have given the format specifier, no? Uh, so what is the type of the variables uh, you are using that and how your input should be taken. Whether the input should be taken in a form of a percentage D means it should take it as an integer, percentage F means it should take it as a float and all, no? So that things will be taken care by this scanner functions, right? So this is available in your stdio.h file. So we have to link that stdio.h file with your program. That linking process should, should be done. So that hash include is a construct that is in a form of a macro construct, right? So similarly, you are having hash defined. Some of the variables you can, you want to have it as a constant variable and that should not change the contents present in that variable, right? For that, you might use the hash defined. And similarly, you can use macros. A macros are nothing but in case, instead of uh, writing functions, you can write macros and whenever you, when you, uh, whenever you're compiling the program first of all the macros will be replaced in the place wherever you are having macro calls okay you will have some set of statements in the macro definitions in the top of your program before main and in the main if you call that macro instructions that we're using macro call macro function name this is similar to function name only right so what it will do is it will replace that set of instructions in places wherever you have used it. This is just like inline program. You might have studied inline program, right? That's the difference between using functions, normal functions and inline functions. Inline functions will replace the codes, uh, but the normal functions, whenever you are calling that, the control will go to the particular function and execute that instructions and once again come back to main program. Okay, so that is a difference between these two. The same thing, uh, the same as uh, inline function this macro calls will also help you to replace the codes wherever you call that function right so for that we are using this preprocessor once all these conversions a replacement of text is done next you have to go for compiler that compiler will convert into most of the time it is converting your program into assembly language only and then it is convert using assembler code to convert into object program and here, uh, because the object program here, it is taken it as target area machine code, right? That is in the forms of bits and bytes. Now, here, again, we have to note down, if I am running this code, I have to use address, no? Which address I have saved the first variable, which I have, I have used the second variable and all, right? So if I give fixed address, and if I save the program in some other places, I have to go and fetch all these things. Or in any case, if I want to move the program from one place, main memory to the secondary memory, or from the secondary memory, if I want to get back it again, I have to re uh, change all the instructions and as well as I have to change the address of all the variables. That's why whenever it's converting into assembly um, machine code, or how it will convert is, it is converting into a form of relocatable machine code. That means, the first instruction starts from the address 0. Second instruction, if it is a direct addressing mode, means what is the number of bytes it will take? Computer architecture you have studied now. In case of register addressing modes, how many uh, uh, bytes it will take? Based on the operands, right? So based on the instructions, the number of bytes is varying. So 0. If it takes 4 bytes, means next it will go for fourth address next eighth address like that you will write that machine code and then whenever you are moving your program into main memory for execution these loaders and linkers will help you to adjust that address with respect to the address where you have saved now okay so hope you have studied the use of linker and loaders in operating system so this is what are uh, the complete structure of language processing system. Right? 
So preprocessor will help you to do macro processing, file inclusion, hash include, rational processor. Sometimes some of the older language constructs are used, but in the modern editors, it may not accept it. So that uh, will be adjusted by this rational preprocessor. And then uh, if you are having additional capabilities in your current uh, system, or then it will help you to extend that. And these are all done by macro processors. You know what is, you will study about compiler next. You know what is assemblers. And next one is loaders and linkers. Loader that will place the program into memory and prepares them for execution, right? So in the assembler part, the output of assembler is relocatable machine code. The first instruction starts from the address zero and the successive instructions are taking and the position based on the size of the instructions, right? And the linker and loader will take the job when it is moving that relocatable machine code into the memory for execution. It would adjust the memory based on that. Okay. So compiler is doing this one. Next, what is interpretation? Have you used interpreter anywhere? This is also one more uh, language processor. Yes. Any idea where you have used the interpreter in Turbo C? If you use Turbo C editor, you might have studied this one. Is my anyone? Did anyone try with F7? F7 key for execution in Turbo C editor? Guys, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Did anyone try F7? F7 key for execution in Turbo C. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What is the difference between F7 and the one when you are using this Salt F9? Ma'am, one will make it as executable, the other will just compile it, ma'am. Ah. The first one, F7, will make it executable one. Actually, what happened is it will not create a compiled object code for the whole programs. It will just make it as a, um, uh, just it will read the instructions and it will do execution then and there okay so here we are uh, taking uh, interpreter is nothing but it will not create an object code so it will do execution line by line that's all okay so here we are taking the interpretation is it is machine independent one we can use interpreter respect irrespective of machines wherever you are compiling or wherever you are you, you are running your program right and this is dynamic execution. You can uh, you can add codes whenever the execution is in process. And next one is the type of object you are using and dynamic data types, you can use it. It is easier to write and that is because uh, when you are uh, writing, uh, when you are creating an interpreter, it is very easy to write an interpreter program when comparing to compiler program because we don't have many uh, phases in interpreters as compilers. When you study the phases of compiler, you will come to know how it is differing from interpreter, right? And we can easily understand in which line we have error at the time of execution itself. So if I start from the first line, F7, start at, keep on pressing F7. If I find error at the point I can stop, I can easily diagnose it where the error is and immediately I can get correct the errors and we can proceed it further, right? So that's why we are using this interpretation. But the main problem is, the thing is you cannot create an object code. And sometimes this object code may be a machine independent code, right? Now for that we have to, have to use cross compilers. The cross, com normally, uh, normal compiler, when it is converting into machine codes, in case if your target language is a machine code, it will convert into a form which can be understood by the particular machine, right? If you take the .o file to some other uh, system and if you execute it, it won't work, it won't execute because 
if the architecture is varying from one system to another system if one is using 64 bit os and another one is using 32 bit os means that time your object code will not be executed in the next system okay so if i want to enable that facility what i have to use is i have to go for cross compilers so what it will do is it will generate an object code uh, that is in a form which can be executed in any places or any systems okay so if that facility is available then interpreter is uh, you will feel that interpreter is not a good choice because first a problem is you have you cannot create a complete object code every time you have to read the instructions and then go for execution and it will take more time also but the error diagnostic part it is very good okay and next question you may have as i told you when you are compiling you are generating a machine code which can be executed in that machine only then how are we using all the websites all the web programming languages whatever they have written in somewhere in some other servers but we are executing that programs in our system in our client machine how is it possible yes yes ma are we using interpreter in all these websites any idea about web programming language no it's not an interpreter only right they we are using just if you take java java is getting that much popularity because of this problem right um, what are the problems we are facing in c and c program c++ is we are using compiler which will generate object program which can be executed in the machine where you are creating this object program right but when you are going for java programming language there you are using both the compilation and interpretation right so the first the translator will convert into intermediate program not as a pure object code right it will generate one intermediate program and in your client machine you will be having a virtual machine next question will come i didn't install virtual machine in my system wherever i am having right automatically the server will uh, if you use java programming language you might have studied this one there is a java virtual machine client machine uh, that that is like a remote uh, os right so you have to install that virtual machine so that you are having java c java compiler will be there as well as java interpreter will be there so they both will help you to convert your intermediate program into a machine language which can be understood by your client machine right okay so here we are using this compiler java c you know that java c is normally known as just in compilers so this is having the facility of both the compilation as well as interpretation right so that's why we are using java and all the versions jsp and all we are using it or uh, why because of having this portability right but in c compiler we don't have that portability we have to go for some cross compilers for that that is an additional features we can embed but it won't work for all the operating systems that's a problem here hope you can understand the architecture of 64 bit os or if you are taking 32 bit os or 64 bit os nowadays you are coming with different uh, processors so one processor uh, is may differ from another processor and but the if the architecture itself is different even if you are taking some of these softwares it may work well in windows uh, but it may not work with linux right so if you take word microsoft word it may work well in uh, windows but it will not work for linux operating system so why because uh, their compatibility is important right when you are whenever they are taking it to an executable form they are writing code in a form which could be understood by windows machine that is we don't have that portability right so for that we have to go for some other uh, software like star office to be used in linux operating system so but when you are taking the java programming language it's portable one you can use in any of the os 